And uh, somebody half built some mines there. Okay, it looks like uh, Sock is, is replanting some mines that were there. Uh, Minesweeper guys, taking a look around. Um, for newer players out there, this is a very good habit to get into, is just upgrading at least one squad uh, with Minesweepers. Now, I counted up before, and I counted seven army items for... Um, Seven army items for uh, Automat. So I don't know what his eighth army item is, but uh, he should definitely consider having the Minesweeper Radius upgrade because that's a really cool, really cool drop. Uh, increases the Minesweeper Radius by 50%, which is basically the entire screen. Uh, you can see mines everywhere. So having just one group of those guys follow you around or just capping stuff. Oh, we do have a few more mines here. It looks like the Gladiator Riflemen are going to sidestep that. Triple grenades! The assault grenades go off. Look at that! Look at that gentleman just go flying through the air. Uh, grenade for their uh, grenade for the Gladiator Riflemen. Also going on to the close combat folks. Killing one of their men. Wounding them a little bit. And now look at this positioning here. Everybody else who even comes anywhere near here is just instantly pinned. We've got... Uh, Double HMG teams overlapping fields of fire. Uh, this one pointing down this way. This one pointing over here onto the left. And, uh, oh, propaganda also going down. Reducing the accuracy and movement speed. Oh, so many kills here. Three kills now. Four kills onto the rifleman squad. They're going to have to retreat across this massive line of fire. And uh, they just barely get on out of there. So really, really tough defenses uh, for Suck. And now we can see in the production queue... Uh, Suck has the Panther coming out. So very fast Panther, just kind of holding on tight with a couple of uh, packs. And uh, pretty good build order, especially against, you know, against an armored player, you can almost always guarantee that uh, the armored player is going to try and stall out early game. And here we have, once again, it looks like uh, Inspired Zeal is perhaps activated. But I don't think anybody can benefit from it. That's probably left over from the last encounter. And we do have some flamethrower engineers as well, some minesweeper engineers kind of being backed up by this Greyhound. This is another great habit to get into. Uh, when you're pressing forward with your Greyhound, bring a minesweeper, especially if you have the upgraded minesweeping radius. Uh, because there's almost always a couple of mines out there, and mines are just devastating against the M8. Uh, it's, it almost always does, you know... 50% or more damage and, and destroys an engine or something like that to hit a small mine. Which, by the way, is kind of historically accurate. If you ever get bored and want to read around on Wikipedia about the M8 Greyhound, you'll find that that was the, one of the biggest complaints by the drivers was the fact that it had no uh, under armor and therefore even light anti-personnel mines could take them out. Kind of interesting. Pack cannon right in the side and uh, cruising on by. Looks like it just got Vet 1. And I'm increasingly becoming a fan of just getting plain old armored Greyhounds. Oh, Gunner getting killed. Oh no, he's standing in front of the Blitz Anti-Tank Gun, but he doesn't know it. Blitz Anti-Tank Gun winding up for a third shot. Will he get it? Will he get it? Oh, out of control. Careening away, taking that turn, and just kind of crashing into nothing there. Blowing into pieces everywhere. Uh, firing up the... Oh, we got some serious, some serious Gladiator Riflemen running out there, along with the accomplished Panther coming out of the battlefield. Uh, the Riflemen now are just putting some heavy fire down at this HMG team, but we have the double HMG teams. You can see why this overlapping fire capacity is so good. Uh, even a strong attack taking out this first HMG is enough, uh, it isn't enough to get past the second one. Blitz anti-tank gun firing at them, Panther firing at them, and all of the infantry have to retreat. Uh, big huge loss here for Automed. He lost his one vehicle, uh, took some severe casualties, and had to retreat from the, the whole front there. So, uh, Accomplished Panther, by the way, uh, it's just a standard, it, it's basically a Panther with all of the normal uh, attributes that Accomplished also gives, which is kind of a normal hero item kind of thing. Um, can't list them all off the top of my head, but you know, it's like accuracy, uh, hit points, health, regen. I'm thinking of the allies one. But anyhow, I'm not going to look at my notebook. I've got a notebook over there where I write all this stuff down, just so I can remember it. For times like this, blood its way over there and I'm lazy, so I don't care. Meanwhile, uh, just re... Oh, and the Enhanced Oswin Flak Panzer, another beautiful, beautiful uh, menacing hero here is coming on out. And we'll have to see where this is going to go. I'm just going to speed this up a little bit while everybody gets repositioning. Doopa 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 doo. Some mines going down here for Automed. A lot of mines, actually. That's not a bad idea, especially if you know your opponent is running around uh, with a bunch of vehicles. It's kind of light firing. Here we go. Now, the infantry have moved on up, taking a shot directly from the Accomplished Panther, and even uh, getting uh, getting a little bit of propaganda down there. Great use of propaganda. He's, you know, he really has a hair trigger on that, and I appreciate that. Sometimes, you know, with these activated abilities that you have to kind of target and stuff like that, it's, it's kind of hard to really quickly use them. And uh, Sticky Bomb going off in the Panther, that's always a great way to begin, the, to, uh, you know, begin any sort of... Uh, 
a fight with a large armored thing. It's just to slow it down and get out of there. So, uh, Panthers, it's worth noting that even though they do a lot of damage, they're actually not particularly effective against infantry. They only have a 2 uh, versus infantry, which is what this damage stuff down here means. Ostwinds, on the other hand, have a 7 versus infantry. So this pairing of Ostwind versus uh, Accomplished Panther, Panther can take up basically any vehicle, light or heavy, uh, 9 effectiveness against all vehicles, whereas the Ostwind is super duper anti-infantry. Not only does it do tons of damage to infantry, it has a very fast rate of fire. Uh, meanwhile, we do have Duffy's anti-tank gun getting onto the field. Uh, surely going to hold onto these, uh, hold onto this position here. No one really wants to assault an anti-tank gun directly. Uh, Duffy's anti-tank gun at level five has free uh, armor-piercing rounds, which do serious damage to vehicles. So that's what's going on there. Infantry getting a little bit bold here. Going to kind of move on up and see what they can find. And we do have a Panzer now, uh, another army item just to take a look. Pan Panzer has max health increased by 16%. So. Volksgradiers, Ostwind, Panzer, and a Panther, and Panzer Mark IV are the armies on the right-hand side. So, you can see it looks like these infantry are just kind of poking up here, trying to cap this point. Looking pretty good. Uh, still, solid defense here on the left. These double machine guns are really rude. Uh, he could probably even move them up just a little bit more just to really secure this area. And frankly, these uh, Burger Panzer Pioneers could definitely uh, move around and start capping everything here on the left. But... All of the players' attention is now focused here on the right. And we'll see what's going to happen. Ah. And here's what's going to happen. We have a terror officer moving on in. And I love this. Terror officer can be so brutal. Calling down a rain of fire. A uh, little mini firestorm here. Oh, the terror officer goes down, but the mini firestorm completely takes out Duffy's anti-tank gun. And meanwhile, everybody else, look at the bodies just flying all over the place. Uh, this first infantry squad gets really beat up by that. I believe that's the uh, gladiator riflemen having to get out of there. Uh, the other riflemen just kind of holding their own, but with no anti-tank gun available, uh, they pretty much have to get out of here. There's no reason at all for this armor to hold back, and that's exactly what they're going to do. Nice mining, though. Again, habits of good players. If you're, if you're on territory you think you're going to retreat across, mine it up. So, mines everywhere. These are all Ottomans mines uh, all across the map here. Looks pretty good. So, uh, nine kills for this Ostwin, six kills for the Panther, one kill even for the Panzer, which just got here. And you can see by just, just by seeing this exposed positioning here on this bunker, I guarantee you that's going to be a repair bunker uh, just because it's got close proximity. These ar this armor is probably just going to sit here and guard this capture point for the rest of the game, or at least, you know, that's the overarching idea. And uh, now we're just chilling. Let me go ahead and speed this up a little bit. I apologize for speeding it up, by the way. I happen to know that this game is just a few seconds over an hour long, uh, which means five YouTube videos instead of four. So if I fast forward for a couple of points during this, I can keep the whole thing under an hour. So, and these are just resupply times. You can see everybody goes back home. They repair a little bit. They build some more units. Second Duffy's anti-tank gun on the field. Uh, meanwhile, the rest of the infantry are moving on up. Getting ready for another big fight here against the armor. HMG team setting on up, and I'll just go ahead and uh, pause that now and let this keep on going. So, heavy machine gun chilling out, Oswin Flak Panzer, and everybody's just kind of, you know, just kind of waiting here. So, we do have the uh, mine squad. Oh, look at this. Oh, don't walk too far away. Don't walk too far away. Look at all the mines everywhere. He sees four packs of mines, and uh, unfortunately, there are still Bargain Volks Rangers and HMG team here. And look at this. Opening fire onto the mines, popping them all, and uh, these guys might even take a, take a shot or two at the mines. If ever you don't have time to disarm mines, just blow it up. It's not a bad idea. I've seen people throw hand, hand grenades onto mines that they don't have time to disarm. Uh, really, whatever they can do. They leave one very wounded set of mines there, and the two engineers, both down to a single man, uh, are going to have to retreat. Duffy's anti-tank gun moving up. Now, I like this mine placement, but you got to be real careful about this. Um, Especially when firing, st uh, <laughs> you know, I'm always very, very aware of my own mines because uh, missed shots firing at you can blow up your own mines, and uh, I always kind of worry about that. Oh, the terror officer! Terror officer moving in, so effective against anti-tank, and it's really great to have him out there camouflaging. So just d don't, don't sit on your own mines. It's not a good idea if you're going to be exchanging fire with. Oh no! Oh no! Firestorm coming down here on the anti-tank gun, and everyone retreating, and mines everywhere. Oh, brutal! Brutal! Oh, little little annoying terror officer here, just sniping away at these Duffy anti-tank guns. Uh, so, oh, not good, not good. I love terror officers, by the way. I think they're just like, I think they're fun just because of the viewer 
factor alone. Looks like first repair bay, second repair bay. Uh, double repair bay is going up now uh, for Suck as his uh, Panzer is getting worked on, his Ostman's getting worked on. Actually, no, it's not. Everybody kind of piles onto one vehicle. But a uh, good way to restore the health of your vehicles if you're going to move up in the area here. Infantry moving back, and we do have a Pershing on the field. Let me go ahead and swap viewpoints back to Ottoman for one moment. You can see he just blew all of his money on this very first Pershing, and now he has a little bit of munitions available. That 180 range, that 150 or 150, 160 range is where you want to be if you want to fire off an HVAP and uh, get some repairs going on. So here comes the Pershing versus everybody. Now, uh, it is currently under propaganda. That's okay, because he's going to counter that by putting up his own HVAP. So we have HVAP under propaganda. And the repairing is also active. So we have a self-repairing HVAPing Pershing moving along up here. Uh, likely already firing off a long-range shot or two. A uh, long-range shot, if you're not aware, by the way, you can level it up so that it always penetrates and does bonus damage and things like that. It's, that's a quick cooldown kind of thing. Taking some serious damage, but also being nicely repaired. Uh, HVAP firing again. Unfortunately, you know, my one criticism of this is it looks like the Pershing just kind of... He had so many targets, he didn't know how to choose. He put some he put some rounds into this Oswin, who's now retreating. Put some rounds into the Panther, which is, honestly, that's the right choice. The Panther is the big threat in the field here. I mean, you know, a Panzer will eventually do enough damage to a, a Pershing as well. But uh, Panther has got nine effectiveness against tanks. Uh, meanwhile, the Pershing has got eight against everything, by the way. If you're Chinese, this is a very lucky vehicle. So, uh, unfortunately, everybody's just kind of standing around in the uh, in the propaganda field there, but it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, big infantry push moving up. At some point, by the way, this infantry uh, got the Browning Automatic Rifles and Sticky Bombs. I don't know about hand grenades. I kind of doubt hand grenades. Well, you never know. But now the game changes. So now this is the point at which Automed is level 7, and you can now afford both a Pershing and a Calliope. So kind of the name of the game is, uh, whoa, can he get up there? It looks like he's really in close sticky bombing this Ostwin. Always, always a very dangerous move, sticky bombing Ostwins, because you're going to take so many casualties getting in there. Uh, looks like he's moving on up, kind of chasing these vehicles away. Oh, propaganda kind of keeping him slowed. He's going to have to retreat. And the Pershing now very healthy looking with HVAP activated and armored bounty. Oh, is he going to get the kill with Armored Bounty? Oh, so much, so much damage there. Is he going to go ahead and pick off the rest of this Ostwin? Go, Ostwin. Go, 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 go. Armored Bounty. Oh, Armored Bounty, if you're not aware, gives you money and fuel every time you kill something. Oh, so beautiful. And uh, also, you can see his damage goes up. Uh, he's got, like, I think it's like five or ten seconds where uh, if you uh, if you get a kill with Armored Bounty up, you uh, get a little bonus there to health. And now everybody's backing away, so look at that. Look at that good Pershing use there. Really, really brutal thing. That's like the one piece of armor that the entire allied <laughs> the entire allied force has that can stand up to this kind of uh, the stuff that the Germans have. Uh, Germans have really, really strong armor. So the Pershing now backing off. Just enough uh, munitions for um, looks like one HVAP if he needs it. Uh, the mine gentlemen, the minesweeper guys, are going to cap this point and back away and get some repairs off there. So the real question now is, uh, or the real problem for an armored player at this point in the game is. You really want to keep saving up. You want to get another Cali or a first Calliope or a second Calliope or a, you know maybe even a second Pershing, but you don't want to have to spend a lot of money on this crap because uh, honestly these rifleman squads are just kind of there as a buffer. You're really planning on winning the game with your with your armor force at this point. So uh, we'll have to see how he's going to mitigate that. At some point he got a weapon support center. I actually didn't see that go up. And uh, I don't think I've even seen anything yet. And oh my god, look what I'm missing while I'm down there talking about weapon support centers. We do have a King Tiger on the field here. And just to confuse you even more, I'm going to switch back to Suck's point of view. So we can see that King Tiger is uh, called out. And it looks like there can only be one. I'm just reading the description here. You can upgrade King Tiger so that you can have uh, more of them for more cost. Again, really good reflexes on uh, throwing down propaganda and using it to his advantage, slowing troops down, that sort of thing. Backing up the King Tiger uh, with anti-tank guns. So now, King Tiger versus Pershing. I think King Tiger almost always wins in, in you know, head-to-head -head combat, at least. You need to, you know, use a few more tricks if you want to take on a King Tiger with the Pershing. But uh, King Tiger, 999, six versus buildings, I suppose. But nobody ever really cares about that. If you have time to blow up buildings, usually you've already won the area. So let's take a look at the map now. Nice Pershing action. Suck is complimenting. Look at these well-mannered players, <laughs> despite his name. <laughs> let's take a look at the map here, just kind of see where things are for Suck. You can see he's got very solid control. Uh, heavy infantry and uh, machine gun control over here on the left. Heavy armor, anti-tank gun, machine gun control over here on the right. Really.